What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Let's all say a little prayer here that the OBS starts. Went to fire her up yesterday and well, you guys know if anything, if it's anything in my life, it's got a dead battery. This time I know what it was. I uh, unfortunately left something on inside. So that was my fault that these batteries are dead. However, totally derailed my plans yesterday. So we are making up for that today. Um, I left this on a charger last night for a little bit. I don't like leaving things charged overnight when I'm not you know, paying attention to them, especially when the batteries are in the truck. So hopefully there's enough to fire it up. Unfortunately, it's cold right now. So a feeling by the time the glow plug heaters come on, it's going to eat a lot of battery, but let's see. Here we go, come on. Voltmeter uh, reads 11.9, probably not enough, but you never know. Come on, booger, come on, booger. Oh, come on. Hey, it was enough, all right. Well, my day just got a little easier. Now we've got a couple of special guests in the truck with us today. We've got the horse. Horse, say hi. Psst, camera's over here. Hey, say hi. And then of course we've got Gunner just chilling in the back there. Nice and comfy. Now you're probably thinking, how come Gunner gets the whole back seat and the horse has the tiny front seat? And well, Gunner's not as nimble as he used to be, so he needs all the space back there, especially when we're on these old dirt roads, to not get bounced around, whereas the horse is pretty nimble, so she can hang out up front. Okay, for work today, I need to take two scaffolding frames with me and see the guys tie wire these together, which was smart. Oh, uh, gonna reach. I'm gonna untie this son of a gun here. Now we're just gonna very briefly use these just to set some rebar cages in. They honestly might have them set in by the time I get there. But we have to run around all morning before we go to the job. So just two frames. Scaffolding is all loaded up. Let's go grab my dump trailer, which is not here at the ranch, but it will be, I think, by the end of this video. Horse, you ready? All right, sounds good. So the other day, well, yesterday actually, I used the old Mama Rhino Tahoe here to tow the dump trailer because I had to go get this thing registered. It has been uh, sitting here for quite some time and I have not registered yet. I just have not had time to take it down to the DMV. It was an out of state thing. So you have to go to the DMV, can't go to AAA or anything like that. So for those of you that are in California, I'm sure other states are the same and you've ever, uh, and you've been curious about buying something out of state like a trailer. Basically, if you pay taxes in that state, whatever the difference is, you have to pay in this state. Obviously California is more than most places. So um, if you pay sales tax in let's say Arizona, which I actually did on my Denali there when I bought it, then I brought it into the state, registered it in the state, I had to pay the difference. Obviously, there was a little bit more taxes that need to be paid on top of that because, well, California. This trailer, I actually didn't pay any sales tax on in Utah, so basically I just paid the whole lump sum um, yesterday when I went and got this thing registered. Now, I've given Diamond C a lot of props on these trailers. They are freaking phenomenally built. There's two things I gotta show you guys right now. One of which, went to go put the license plate on here, and don't mind the barking dog there, and uh, well, well, no, nobody really thought of uh, apparently license plate's gonna hit the frame there and you can't get to the hole, so we'll be drilling some new holes. The other thing is when they were going to powder coat this thing, uh, apparently this booger is flipped in the up position, got powder coated, and well, I've got a nice horseshoe right here of a uh, non-powder coat because nobody moved that in the powder coating process. And that side, no problemo, this side, Doo doo. You know, here I was trying to be responsible, put license plates on one of my vehicles for once, but uh, well, so much for that. Now the Tahoe does not have trailer brake controllers and I wouldn't want to tow it that much with these things. This trailer right here weighs about 4,500 pounds empty. So I towed that yesterday, obviously again with no trailer brake controller. Definitely wouldn't want to try to pull this trailer with any weight in it with a Tahoe. So here's the joys of having multiple vehicles, multiple setups, multiple trailers. Um, came to the back of the truck and realized I had no hitch on here. I'm like, oh crap. And then, well, I found the hitch in there, but I was missing the sleeve. So then I dug around a little bit and I found the sleeve that also had a hitch on it, but this hitch doesn't stick out far enough. So I combined the two. I combined this hitch with this sleeve and I'm like, all right, everything is fine and dandy. This is actually gonna work today. And then this pin that was on this setup is not long enough to go through um, and still be able to lock it. So we gotta go borrow my bolt lock off the Denali and Frankenstein together a freaking hitch. Let's see if we can take this off one handed. There we go, because this one is longer. Oh, but it gets better guys. If you guys can see that, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera. See how it is just not exactly lined up with the hole there, and that is as far as that sleeve can go in. Well, that is enough to cause this pin to not want to go in. 
it'll go in one side. You can get it in the one side, but then it also it has to kick at an angle to get in. So basically, if you're looking at it from the top right now, it just kicked like that to be able to get past that little ridge. And well, then obviously that keeps it from going in to that side. Today is stacking up to not be working in our favor. I thought we had good luck when uh, the old truck started up. This sleeve had to come off this truck. It was in the bed of this truck. Like I've had a sleeve on here forever. Like it had to have been this sleeve. Why things are not fitting now, I have no idea. Okay, we are on hitch pin number three. Uh, I've taken this booger off the Tahoe here and off of this ball, cause it's a little bit skinnier. And then I'm gonna hit it with a hammer and drive it in and I'm probably gonna regret doing that cause it's gonna be a nightmare to get back out. But don't exactly have a choice right now. And then to top it off, couldn't find a hammer. So we're gonna beat it in with this here pipe wrench. Come on, booger. There we go. Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, jeez, this is gonna suck to get out. I hope it's long enough. All right, Whew. that probably lives there from now on. Three hours later, we are done. Now let's get the trailer hooked up. thing is gonna sit super, super low. So we put the coupler at the top of the adjustment there. When we we uh, pick this up with that 450, obviously on a you know 10 to 12 inch lift. Most of our vehicles are fairly large, including the Tahoe's decently lifted. Um, but I guess my old gray truck here, it's just the lowest of the group. <laughs> We've got like, I don't even know, maybe a foot-ish of clearance there. Low driveways are gonna suck and we're going somewhere with a low driveway. We're actually going somewhere that is super kind of tight and narrow to get into. Not really trailer friendly at all. However, it is uber exclusive and expensive. good looking combo though I mean I didn't specifically pick this trailer to match this truck perfectly however I do enjoy gray you guys know that you've seen all the projects I've done so far that we've done in gray uh, but they just said it's a good looking combo right there I don't know y'all I think I jinxed a bunch of stuff happening today because now I have no trailer brakes the trailer brake controller in this truck's always been a little shady however it has always worked except for today. This is very strange because the trailer connections are good, lights work, everything works on the trailer, just no trailer brakes. And the, the trailer brake controller lights up, as you can see right there, it just does nothing. So we're rolling with no trailer brakes today on a truck that has horrible brakes. The good thing is we're meeting up with Papa Rhino. So I think for the trip back, once there's a load in the trailer, um, we will use the 450. I don't want to risk it with uh, this truck right now, 4,200 pounds, no big deal. The truck will stop that on its own. Now I will say this trailer tows freaking great. Um, it's not bouncy at all when empty. My deck over trailer can get super, super bouncy. And I know that has more to do with the length and the axle position on the trailer, but this thing tows freaking phenomenal. I wish I had trailer brakes. But again, I think that's more of the truck issue. It could have been with Sergio wired up the lights, something got tweaked because honestly, I've only towed it with the 450 since then. And the stopping power on the 450, I wouldn't know if the trailer brakes were on or not without like having something tell me I should check. Now I gotta do my best here to not show too much of where we're going. It's a very, very exclusive, wealthy neighborhood here. But this will give you a little of an idea of just kind of how tight and narrow these driveways are. This is like a solid, I don't know, mile driveway here going down in, super tight, single track width. I really hope there's not gonna be anybody coming at us right now because we're gonna be screwed. Um, not that we couldn't back the trailer all the way back out, but it won't be fun. You can see just how tight it is back there for the trailer. Oh, well, we got Papa Rhino. I spoke too soon. We got the biggest truck to come at us. Thankfully, Papa Rhino came at like the one extra wide spot on the driveway here. So we're gonna swap trucks right now. I'm gonna hook the trailer up to his truck because this driveway is pretty steep. 
And if you guys have ever driven a truck with a vacuum leak on the brakes, like this truck has had for probably, I don't even know, five years at this point, you get two pumps of the brakes and then you have no brakes. And until you build vacuum pressure back up, you have no brakes. And that takes a second. Like that doesn't just happen instantly where that vacuum pressure builds back up. So normally I could rely on the trailer brakes in a scenario like this. If I'm going down a driveway, I can just use a trailer brake controller or actually pressing the brakes would activate the trailer brakes. And then the trailer would stop me and the truck. But in this scenario with no trailer brakes, I don't want to put the truck through the front of somebody's house. Okay, Papa Rhino is going to take oh, the great truck. So he can go unload the scaffolding because again, you can see it gets back to narrow up there. It's not gonna be a whole lot of space. Um, definitely not space to pull the gray truck in once we have this truck and trailer down in there. So we'll get all hooked up here. Let's see if we could pick the trailer up here. I haven't done it in this truck. I could do it in my uh, Denali pretty easy, but we'll just air up the rear a little bit. Oh, and we are connected. Get her clipped in. Look at these strobe lights. Strobe lights looking freaking killer. This truck is a freaking monster. Cannot wait to get myself a 450. It's gonna happen, one of these days, one of these days. While we wait for Papa Rhino, this will be a good test here to see, let's see if the trailer brakes are working. Oh, yep, the brakes are working. So by squeezing these right here, I'm engaging the trailer brakes without touching the truck brakes, and the trailer just stopped the truck, which means the trailer brakes are working, so it is in fact the trailer brake controller on the Crew Cab OBS there, which, that sucks. I mean, I guess it's better than an issue with a trailer. This trailer's brand new. So now I'm waiting for Papa Rhino to come back because again, it just gets narrower as we go up the driveway here. And uh, I'm gonna need all the space for the 450 and the trailer there to turn around. And this is really the only passing point. So now you guys can kind of see our predicament here. It's a pretty small driveway here, packed full of vehicles. So basically what we have here is a gym add-on to this house. I mean, obviously it's a big, beautiful house. They are adding on a gym, which you can see the foundation for right here. And then out there is going to be a big patio. Um, so Papa Rhino is finishing up the block work on that right now. Let me give you guys a walk down this hill a little bit. Oh geez, I'm trying to not fall. We're rocking the work dudes today. Not the best for grip, but you guys can see the big old retaining wall that's been put in. Actually, those last five courses aren't retaining. That's just uh, going to be a wall for the patio that's going to be up on there. So basically from there to there, that's all retaining wall, all waterproofed, already backfilled with drains and everything in it. And then we've got these column block because the building's going to come out to about here. And then there's going to be a nice big covered patio overhang there with, of course, this big, beautiful view down here. All right, so Paul rhino has got that column topped out. We're gonna move the little bit of scaffolding over here, get the last little piece that goes up there, and then uh, all the block work is pretty much done. And then we can start hauling all the concrete forms and everything to the trailer and get it all out of here. All righty, guys, trailer's first use. Here goes nothing. We're about to scratch the new off of her. I mean, I guess it's better than like dirt or rock or broken concrete being the first load in here. I will say it is nice that these are uh, under a little tension, so they just stay open. How long will that last? No idea.
you got all of the stuff loaded up here. Obviously, you don't need the whole trailer for what we did, but running, you know, these long boards, actually 14 footers, there's no 16 footers here, um, in the pickup truck bed would not have been fun. So, trailer made very easy work of that. We'll get her all closed up here. Okay, we are all packed up, ready to go. Let's get out of here. Okay, we are trading trucks. Papa Rhino's gonna be taking the uh, crew cab OBS. I'll be driving the 450. He doesn't much enjoy towing the trailers. Now, when I say this neighborhood is very exclusive, there are some monster homes over here. The one we're at today, that would be considered small for this neighborhood. Uh, right across the street here, I believe is 75,000 square feet. This is where like the rich of the rich like to hide away because uh, all the houses are pretty tucked in here tightly. It's a good looking OBS right there. Now we get the joys of sitting in all of the California traffic here. Well, yesterday I used Papa Rhino's 450 and got the trailer up to the ranch. Really didn't do anything exciting. Just parked it here, so I didn't film anything. Now, unfortunately today, I get to unload all of this stuff because I want to use this trailer to haul some freaking dirt. And basically we're gonna do what we broke the mini truck doing, which is haul a bunch of dirt out to fix where all the ruts were in the road in front of the driveway. We're gonna do it with the crew cab OBS. I was gonna do it with the single cab, but uh, remember all those hitch pins that I took out yesterday? Yeah, I, I forgot to put them back in the truck. So we have to use the truck that has the hitch permanently locked on it because I pounded the crap out of that pin to get it in. The single cab's got better brakes, but it also has a trailer brake controller that I haven't been able to figure out and I don't really think works. So this should get a little interesting and maybe a little bit hairy today. We're not moving dirt too far, but we're gonna find out. I've had the trailer plugged in overnight because this thing has not been plugged in uh, probably in like two months. But the battery was still good. It was still showing half charge. You can see all the cat footprints. Cat's been checking this booger out. What are we at here? We are at good on the gauge there. Trailer is all hooked up and I really need to lower this coupling. That way it raises the front of the trailer because yeah, that is just way too low, especially out here at the ranch. Starting to think this might not be the best idea <laughs> to load up this thing with a bunch of dirt with no trailer brakes and a truck with bad brakes. I also don't like that this truck's two-wheel drive, whereas the single cab's four-wheel drive. So hopefully we don't get this thing stuck by putting a bunch of weight in there. It's not like we're super off-roady rock crawling trying to get to where I, my pile of dirt is, but it's kind of uneven and some, there's some pretty loose sand there. We made it to Rhino's lumber yard. We got a whole crew of helpers here, but I have a feeling these guys are gonna be just as helpful as the folks in the uh, Home Depot loading section. Are you guys gonna help me load this? You all seemed interested. Hello, I don't have any food. I do not have any food. Oh, now, now you're not interested. No food, you're out, okay. We got the mini donkeys. And then we've got the big donkeys. And then we've got the baby goats. We've got Big Walt way back there. And we've got, of course, Willie and bubbles what's up baby goat you gonna help me i have a feeling you're just gonna make this a lot harder say hi to the channel willie everybody misses you how are you how are you there you go come on willie yep let's go now one thing about the lumber that you see us use when we're doing any type of concrete work is it's got to be straight so we cherry pick our lumber use it for forms and we can usually get a couple of uses out of them as long as we keep them in good condition um, so if you see over here, I've got all of this lumber stack that I have used for concrete forms. These are actually scaffolding planks, but a lot of this stuff is concrete form stuff. We've got it kind of set up here on some racking. It's a little hokey, but it keeps the boards flat, except for these concrete forms, which these are actually the, probably the most expensive boards here. These are specifically made as concrete forms. While I wish I could just like dump this thing and call it good, unfortunately, we don't get to do that. I get to hand stack all of this. Now, the good news is I've got me a new GoPro head mount. So we're back on my forehead. Maybe that's good to you. I don't know, but it does make it easier for me to get some stuff done here. Uh, this does not stay. Our rebar bender needs to go back in the truck. Take some bundles of steaks. And we got so much random stuff here. And granted, we'll end up using most of this. Alrighty. Now, it is no fun when you have to pick through for what you need. However, being out here away from a Home Depot, it is nice to have a bunch of stuff out here. Plus on top of that, you guys know lumber prices are crazy, so the more use you can get out of your lumber, the better.
Now, this is the side of construction a lot of people don't see. And they don't realize that, you know, you're paying your contractor X amount of money, but who's paying for these hours when it comes time to bring the material back to the yard, sort the material, stack the material, get the material ready for the next job. Like you have to work those costs in somehow. And a lot of people don't, and it kind of is hard as a contractor because there's a lot of cheap people out there that don't think that this time is worth anything, even though this has to happen for their job to happen. And it's the same with bidding jobs. Uh, the guy that came out with the free estimates idea should be kicked in the uh, testiculars because the amount of hours that go in to give a quality estimate on a project is insane, depending on obviously the scope of the project. But a lot of people don't think you should be paid for that. And basically they'll shop around, which obviously, you know, it's always recommended you shop around contractors, get three prices or whatever. Let's just say four hours writing up this quote. And that could be, you know, obviously that's, that's variable based on the job for you to obviously not take my job. But who pays me for those four hours? Currently nobody. So to everybody that complains that $15 an hour is not enough, you know, to flip burgers, at least you get paid for all the hours that you work. Construction, not always the case. Now, would I rather do this than a lot of jobs? Absolutely. And you're probably looking at a lot of little stuff like this and thinking it is trash and scrap, but we could turn a lot of this stuff into steaks that we can actually use. So some of it is trash. Like, I mean, that could be turned into a steak. Sometimes it's not worth it, but sometimes it is. Well, the trailer is all empty. I brought it over to where I like to pull some dirt out of to fill the road. And uh, well, let's see how the old girl does here. But first we have to hike all the way back to the house to grab the Mini X. Um, if I had trailer brakes, I would put the Mini X in the trailer, drive them both down here. Um, but again, definitely not taking that risk with my Mini X in the back there. The Mini X has been over here warming up and I have no, not done a video on that brush cutter yet. When I got it, it was like the height of fire season. It's not when you want to be cutting brush. I did use it though to cut a little bit around the house. I don't know if I mentioned this in a video and some pretty catastrophically dangerous stuff happened. So once we get a little bit more moisture out here in rain, I will, I will do a video on that and show you that thing but it's kind of cool i haven't really had a time like i haven't even really gotten to experience its full effects yet but uh but when what happened happened i uh decided we're gonna put that away for a while <laughs> now so i don't have to drive all the way back around the property in the house over there i'm gonna knock down this berm that i have here which really does help us when uh the rains come through that way i can hopefully drive out this way this is like a gnarly shortcut But then I gotta remember to rebuild this berm if there's rain on the way, which there kind of was supposed to be this weekend, but so far it looks like it's gonna miss us. All right guys, so I'm gonna try to keep all the dirt on this side of the trailer because when I dump it, I, want it, I don't wanna block the entire width of the road. I just wanna hug it on the side that we're gonna use it at. First load of dirt in the new trailer. I'm sorry, girl we have to use yet. Now the good thing is this dirt is still pretty moist so I'm not gonna have to wet it much at all to get it to compact out on the road. It is gonna be nice to haul significantly more dirt than the mini truck can haul. However the nice thing about the mini truck is you don't have to get out of the cab to dump it. It's basically a little mini dump truck. This, I'm gonna have to get out of the cab, pull the controller out, open the gate. I mean, I guess I could just leave the gate open. Ain't nothing gonna spill out. Oh, that, that was bad, that was bad. Now, I also have no idea how the truck's gonna do pulling this. So it's a gamble. I'm trying to do all of this in one shot. I feel like for the sake of the hydraulic ram and everything not getting out all weird, we're gonna throw, we're gonna throw some on that side over there. Probably shouldn't put it all the weight on one side so the bed comes up and wants to do that. Especially with wet dirt. Wet dirt is a lot heavier than you would think it is. Load a lot at the rear too though, so it's not. Alrighty, so we kind of got a lot of dirt in here. Um, not a lot for the trailer, but a lot for a trailer with no trailer brakes and a truck with crappy brakes. Uh, let's see what happens. I don't know. We're going to see. Obviously, if we were going out on a real road, we'd clean all that off, but 
that'll probably rattle off by the time we get to where we're going. Let's see what the old girl can do here. Oh yeah, this guy, this, this is super sketchy. <laughs> Ooh, she is heavy. All right, I'm gonna try and swing it real wide here. I also have like no tread on my rear tires. I don't know if we're gonna make it out this way. Here goes nothing though. Let's see what happens. And here goes nothing. We're going for it, we're going for it, we're going for it. Oh, bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Oh, don't hit the gate, don't hit the gate, don't hit the gate, oh. Oh, we just cleared the fence right there, baby. All right, well, smooth sailing now. Okay, we're gonna call this good right here. And basically what I'm trying to do is you can see where all this water rutted through and then you can see where I fixed that spot. So I'm gonna fill in all right here and especially right in front of the actual old driveway. Um, it's gonna be hard to see, but it's a pretty decent swell right here, which if you're in anything smaller than a truck, you don't enjoy going over that. This does have a spreader gate on it, which is cool, but it doesn't make sense without a wireless remote on the actual uh, dump portion itself. So basically you pull this pin, drop that, this thing actuates like an actual dump truck and it's a spreader gate. But to me, like you have to raise it as you're driving and adjust it as you're driving, which you can't do with a freaking controller that's connected. So cool feature, but until I go wireless, we're not gonna use that right now. So there are chains for this. A lot of you guys said the guy might have took. I've never really looked for them since we're at the dealership. No, 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 look at that. And we got chains. Now I wish these were attached. I don't like that these aren't just on here full time. Albeit, I guess I could leave them on here full time. And that goes in there. Kind of a funky way to do it. Oh, geez. Come on. Come on. Come on. I might have done this backwards. There we go. All right. See how this little girl does. Now she is slow when you have a telescopic front um, hydraulic ram like this versus the scissor one that's underneath. It is a lot slower on the front here. However, from what I've heard, it is a lot more powerful. Before we go too high though, and we have a lot of weight on the rear. I feel like I should chalk this rear tire. There we go. In case we take off too much weight of the rear of the truck, doesn't want to start rolling. Look at that. Whew, those tires are bald. I wish there was like an auto feature right here where it would just hold the button down. This is gonna take a long time. Well, you can't really beat that service. Uh, my neighbor just happened to be coming by on his farm tractor and uh, he's like, hey, you want me to spread this for you? Absolutely. So that was a huge help. We got that first load spread out. Um, I noticed I need a little bit more. I'm gonna grab a bit more here, but so far very impressed with the trailer. Um, again, it's not like we're doing anything crazy today with it, but uh, so far she's working and that's all I can ask for with the trailer. And this dirt's like a clay. It compacts really, really well. Okay, let's take our much smaller load and we're chasing the sunlight right now because it gets dark at friggin' four o'clock nowadays, which is horrible. My neighbor was a huge help. He got that spread super, super quick. It's nice having the right equipment. I'm kind of stuck out here with only currently owning an excavator. So I make do with what I have, but, but having neighbors that help is freaking awesome. And because we can, you know, we'll throw on the strobes here. Now we have to take an obligatory Instagram picture here. Thankfully down is much quicker than up. Can we just take a minute though to appreciate that beautiful sunset right there? You know, real tough working conditions out here with views like that.
Now we're gonna jump with the Mini X, spread this last little bit here, and be good to go. Can we beat the gate before it closes? Let's see. It's good. So far we're so good. Let's put it in rabbit mode. Let's hard charge it. Come on. We got this. We're gonna beat the gate. We're gonna beat the gate. It's not moving. It's not moving. Oh, we're doing real good. We're doing better than I thought. Maybe the gate broke. Oh, nope, there it goes. And that was like perfect timing right there. Let's kind of feather this out right here where it makes the transition from the road to the uh, stone there. Nice and gentle. We'll leave it a little bit high because we're going to compact it down. Now, do I need a grading bucket? Yes, I do. Is that a rock or is that dirt? Nope, that's dirt. That is dirt. Uh, but without a grading bucket, I think I do pretty decent at getting this stuff pretty fine graded. And because we got them, kick on the Mini X light bar that we built there, which ooh, that guy is getting a little loose. Drag a little bit more here to feather this edge. I don't like any steep drop offs. There we go, there we go, we're looking good. Now we come through, we're gonna use the backfill blade with the float function, which basically lowers the blade, but there's no tension on the blade, so it'll kind of flow with the terrain, which is a good way to really kind of float out any low spots. And then we're gonna track it back and forth, um, which is gonna compact it, and we'll be good to go. Alrighty guys, we are all finished up here. Everything is nice and tracked down and compacted. We've kind of feathered this edge a little bit. I left it a little bit high because eventually when you drop off of the stone there into the dirt, it ends up um, it ends up compacting itself and being a little bit lower. So I'd rather start it off a little bit high. That way when it packs down, um, it should hopefully be close enough to flush out right there. It is quickly gotten dark here. We got the strobes on the trailer there because we're parked out on the road. We're gonna get the uh, Mini X over here put away. Then we'll come back for the trailer. Man, I'm thankful for those lights on the Mini X. It makes working at night so much nicer. Man, do I wish <laughs> the trailer brakes work so I could throw the Mini X in there. It would probably be fine, but it's not worth it. So a lot of hiking we have been doing today. Do our first test here, driving in with the truck and trailer. Oh yeah, that is much, much smoother. I know it's gonna be kind of hard to see me. Don't run it up, don't run it up. All right, we are good. We are good. Oh, that is like perfect. All righty, y'all. Well, with that, we're gonna wrap up this video. Trailer did great. I can't wait to actually get this thing out more and well, actually earn its keep here and get this thing paid for by making it work. Now, obviously for what I used today, like it's not as efficient as a dump truck, having to get in, get out, do all that. But if we're doing small loads, trash loads, uh, broken concrete to where you're doing one or two loads in a day like dump trailers are the way to go But as always, thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed already Please click the subscribe button now so you do not miss out on any future content Don't forget to give this video a like and get a thumbs up Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life You gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out Damn uh. Yeah Uh Yeah uh -huh.